Welcome back everyone to this new episode of Mad Scientist Explain. As you can see on the board right now, still same drawing as last episode, we have crankshaft talk today. It's a really important part of the engine and there's much more to say about it. Now, what are we going to talk about today? Rod ratio. What do we mean by that? Connecting rod ratio is the ratio of the length of the connecting rod versus the stroke of the engine. Now let's have a look here. We do have what we used to manufacture in the past, CR500 crankshaft, and we have the PM09 crankshaft here. See a difference? Yeah, sure. Connecting rod is longer. Let's figure out why we did that and how it's impacting the engine. Now, let's suppose we have your CR500 and PM09. Now, obviously, in the same position, let's say 90 degrees right here, a longer rod will equal in less connecting rod angle. How does that impact? The first, the first situation, given same kind of pressure, same kind of force on the piston, is that the resulting force on the sidewall of the piston is gonna be less in the PM09 versus the CR500. Actually 10% less. What does that mean? It means less friction, less wear, longer life for the piston. Now, really interesting thing that allowed the engineering to do in the PM09 is that by having a longer rod, but keeping the same deck height of the engine, we've simply raised the pin on the piston. What's the impact of that? Big bore two stroke are really well known for skirt collapsing. These big piston rocks back and forth and there's some huge force on the skirt of the piston that tends to break them or bend them. By having the the rod higher on the piston, the movement and torque absorbed by the skirt is much lower, 30% less in fact, which also improved the longevity and the resistance of the piston life in the PM09. So that's, that's the main reason I'd say we went for that. But there's also a lot more going into connecting rod ratio. Now, if we make the calculation in the CR500, we would have a rod ratio of 1.8. We were able to go to 1.9 in the PM09. Now, it'd be, we would have liked to go even higher. If you think about extremely high performance, high efficient uh, two-stroke life rep, example, the Aprilia RSA back in the MotoGP era, they used to be up to 2.2 rod ratio, really long connecting rod. And they've, I, we've talked to these guys and they figured out that was the most efficient and most reliable way to run their engine at really high RPM because of those reduced force on the piston. And we'll talk about more of them later. Now, obviously, kind of limitation, especially on the long stroke engine like a 600cc two-stroke, is that the longer rod you have, the higher the engine needs to be. And there's not that much room in, in a motorcycle, so we were limited by how much we could stretch that connecting rod. But Still, we've improved that package right here. Now, what are the dynamic movement effect of a connecting rod longer on an engine? Let's, let's have a look at the graph right here. Now, one that's really interesting is the height of the piston over the full stroke of the engine. If you look here in blue, we have a normal CR500, uh, for example, 144 millimeter movement of the piston at top dead center right here. Now, with the longer rod, the piston dwells over longer at top dead center because of the geometry of that rod. What does that mean is when the money moment happens, when the, the work's being done, when the, the connecting rod and the crank starts having some, some work done, well, the pistons remain higher. Now, higher piston means remaining pressure is higher as well. So the work done by the piston going down when the crankshaft is at an angle from 15 to 45 and all the way up to when the exhaust open, that's when the work is done, it's more. Obviously this graph is exaggerated a little bit, but still there's, there's an improvement in that case. Now, dwell of a piston also mean that the acceleration at the bottom dead and top dead is also smaller because it's, it, it doesn't have to re-accelerate that quick. So piston acceleration is less, which we've seen in previous video mean less acceleration, less force. So less force on the connecting rod, on the wall of the pistons and on the wall crankshaft assembly. Now, let's not say it's all miracle and nice stuff. 
but in the two stroke it's more or less the case. Now, don't take rod ratio longer the better for every situation. For example, in the four stroke, less piston acceleration at top dead center means less suction to suck the air and the gas inside the engine when the valves open. Luckily for us, in the two stroke, there's no valve up top. That's not how we get the air mixture in the engine. So in our case, the impact of the slower acceleration up top doesn't change anything, but in the four stroke it would. So bottom line, that's about the impact you'll see from a rod ratio if it's engineered properly. Pretty simple stuff, but a lot more longevity, a lot more reliability of an engine by having a longer rod ratio if you can, geometrically wise speaking, you know? So hope you enjoyed that video. That was a short one, but it was great. Let's see you guys for another one next time. Bye-bye.